Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Jillian Ferry, and today we have an incredible return guest back by very popular demand. We have Magdalena on, and she is known as the raw coconut girl. She's very popular. She has been a fruitarian for eight years now. So way to go, Magdalena. She eats only fruit, and she has experienced major healing through her lifestyle, and she's going to share so much with us. And today's video is going to be amazing because it's going to be a viewer Q&A. And you guys blow me away every time. You guys have such good questions for Magdalena, even better than I could think up. So let's get right into it. Hey, Magdalena, how are you? Hey, I'm wonderful. Amazing. How are you? Good. You're looking all tanned. You're in Hawaii. You're looking great like always. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you. You as well. <laughs> Thanks. So how do you feel as an eight-year fruitarian? How's your energy? How do you feel day to day living this lifestyle? And what are you typically eating in a day? Well, I feel amazing. And my smile can describe everything, I think. And mm -hmm. we should celebrate to, together today because it's your birthday as well. So Happy birthday, oh. Julian. <laughs> thank you. Well, my birthday's tomorrow. You're so close, though. It's the 23rd. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you so much. 40 years old. I feel so, I'm just so excited for like the life that's ahead of me. And especially I'm just so excited. But and this you is about so young. Y yes. Yeah. You can't even tell that it's like 40 already. So you just started your life, right? Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. I feel like I can't yeah. wait to see where I am when I'm like 80. And I interview all these raw vegans who are like in their 70s, 80s, 90s, and they're just hustling. They're doing podcasts every week. They're doing courses. They are like doing all these things. Yes. So it's just like, it's amazing. And that's the one thing I love about this lifestyle. Like I have so much energy. So you feel like it's the same for you, right? You're feeling really good. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why I stick uh, with my fruits and I can't imagine to live differently. Yeah. Anymore. Uh, and you know, I don't like, I know that there's a lot of people asking me, are you considering to eat more vegetables in the future or maybe sometimes some cooked food and stuff? You know, like never say never. But for now, for my body, it feels best to be fully on fruits. So yeah. I don't feel like I'm going to ever be um, using any cooked food. <laughs> yeah. Know, uh, yeah, yeah. I think if so, that would be more maybe salads or something. But maybe more nuts and seeds and stuff like that, but nothing like uh, uh, really more over than that. Um, I just, it just completed me. It completes me and my body, mind and soul. So if I feel really, really strong and uh, optimistic and, and powerful in my own body, why I would change it, right? So yeah. you just, and you asked me before, cause I know you asked me this question before and I never had a chance to respond that one because we had so many questions before as well Yeah, <laughs> about what I eat typically in a day. Uh, today I had some water with lemon. Actually, I started differently. As you can see, it's not always my coconut water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I had some watermelon and today I ate a literally very little watermelon and was full. You know, I noticed that I eat less once I'm getting better and better on this journey. So the more I heal, the less I eat, the less I consume there, the less my body requires uh, me to have on a that daily basis. That seems to be common with a lot of people I interview. They say the same thing. And do you count your calories or no? Oh, oh no, no, no. Hell no. no. I don't live in a world of calories at all. And I would recommend each and every one of you to even not worry about it. It's more like we are more like I am a more about what we absorb, what we absorb, what we utilize. And then that all thing, you know, shows us how much we need on a daily basis. So if you, let's say sometimes that's why you need so that little food, like piece of watermelon to just get that energy going. If you don't have a mucus plaque and you have GI tract healed and all the kidneys, adrenals, all that, channels of elimination uh then there's a way to go you know you don't really the, i don't believe the body requires much at that point because i just observing on myself how everything is looking like moving forward and how i feel light mm -hmm. and 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 very like you know how easy it is to even remember simple things like in the past like i was just like having not issues with remembering things, but let's say even names. Like I didn't catch on people's names. And mm -hmm. this is very common. I hear it from everyone. Like, oh, I, I, I forgot your name. What's your name? 
<laughs> you know, yeah. what, what, what's her name? Yeah. And now I even notice that I just don't need to even focus on remembering somebody's name uh, because I just remember it. Like, well, last yeah, time your was... mind is just sharper, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I don't even need to focus on that. It's just there. Like there's a more a space and everything is decluttered, <laughs> you yeah. know? And, and do and you it... ever feel like stressed out and super angry or do you just feel like super zen all the time? I think I got a lot of peace in me. I don't have anger in me. I've never had anger in my character, but what I have, I have sadness instead. So I can be sad of certain situations that someone may be, I don't know, there was like misunderstanding, right, of each other's and stuff like that. So I get more sad because that situation even happened rather than having anger in me mm -hmm. uh, or but uh, of course, it's it could be connected also to the liver, you know. So, if someone has more toxins stored in the liver, then the side effects could happen. So I don't really have that. I didn't experience that. Uh, however, yes, I was fighting with, struggling with being sad and maybe not enough. You know, mm -hmm. like you always expect something more from yourself and. A very crit I will I am very critical about everything I do. So everything has to be perfect, like being on the highest level. If it's not, I'm not posting it or not putting the word, you know. Me too uh, in the same way, yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> and how interesting is that? So I think that became like I have a better relationship with that right now. Good. And I, I look at this differently. Like let's say I have a picture, oh, I'm gonna save it for later. And then I'm like, why am I going to save it for later? What if it's something going to happen tomorrow and I will never do this? You know, I would never post my, let's say, article or something. Let's just do it today. Just use this picture and use this article. You know, the, 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 the mind works differently. I know this is a very simple example, but that's the best way, I think, to describe yeah. things too. Yeah, that it's me too. Very simple. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I wanted to ask you, I know one of the viewers was asking, just to start out with some of their questions, one of the viewers was asking, where do you get your protein? So a classic question, right? And they, I think they were a little embarrassed to ask, but they wanted to ask that. So yeah, this is a very common question. Yeah. I, oh, I didn't even expect that question today, but anyway, <laughs> I, I'm happy that I, <laughs> that I can ask you this again and again. Uh, so, so here's the thing, food that have high concentrate which means complex of amino acids are proteins right so this includes flesh muscles gla uh, gla organs gland tissues etc also nuts meat uh, beans sometimes some starches like grains because they're harder to digest the body requires amino acids not proteins to build the tissue and act as certain the carriers and buffers in the body, right? So we, when we consume proteins, what has happened from animal flesh, grains, and nuts, right? The body must first break those proteins down into the respective amino acids. So think of like, that's actually a really good example, the string of beads. And I'm actually wearing some today which is awesome that <laughs> i like this example i think it's a great example uh, to show let's say like i think this is amazing to show right now i'm as uh, i am amazed how the universe works you know like i wore it for a reason so with each individual uh, beat representing an amino acid right and the competed chain let's say this is like a single amino acid, all the one of each beat. And the single whole chain representing a beat of beats uh, represents a protein, right? So when we eat a protein, the body must pop apart those beats first, right? When we eat protein, the body uh, must pop apart these uh, beats, like I said, which means, you know, break everything down 
for to the simplest level, so it can be used by the body. And the necessary bed are the beads are then recombined in the structure so the body can use it. And then unnecessary ones um, are actually discarded, right? So the body can use it. This requires a lot of energy and initial acid, hydrochloric acid. That uh, acid uh, that release pept pepsins. I, I don't know if that's actually someone is familiar with that, but when you dive in, into uh, cell biology, you can understand that process deeper. To break those all complex proteins, that's what is happening. And then it's the whole process uh, through this that it, the body is going through until it breaks down these complex uh, proteins into amino acids so it can use them properly. That's why, you know, it takes so much energy. That's why yeah. the proteins like coming from the flesh, meat, nuts, beans, starches are the second hand, are so called the second hand amino acids where fruits and vegetables are first and superior amino acids mm -hmm. because they're also for the living, living the alkaline ash. Mm -hmm. So I think this is super um, important to uh, remember. And, you know, I, what I always like to also say that it's important. I know like I couldn't take my beads out of my neck to show it better, but I hope that was understanding. Yeah, uh, it was, you know, yeah. And you know uh, so much. You just like that's probably the most detailed explanation I've ever heard when I've heard when I've asked right. somebody where do you get your protein? Like you know so much. I feel like you probably learned a lot working with Dr. Morris too, right? Yeah, a lot, a lot. I think that his spirit and the way he is explaining things that was just easy for me to absorb, and that was yeah, and that stayed with me for so many years. So I think that question for me, it's like. I haven't finished yet because I, I would like to add something else. Yeah, if you don't Absolutely. Uh, it, it's important to know that the body actually does not burn amino acids for the fuel, for the energy. So these all amino acids that I mentioned about the body does not burn. It would be uh, more like, a bur like, I don't know, put, put the wrong gas into your car <laughs> and burning, you know, like, you know, ruining it on purpose. So yeah. kind of thing, you know. Uh, so, but what the body requires for the energy is carbon. So carbohydrates and oxygen. So carbohydrates and oxygen are used in prominently in raw fruits and vegetables, and they actually are built and contain amino acids. Mm -hmm. And the body doesn't require much energy to break them down and to uh, to use them. Mm -hmm. So you know when we look at the have health issues that people are dealing with uh, pre uh, predominantly with the acidic chemistry we have two sides of chemistry as we know it right there are acids and alkaline and we have two so proteins can be super hard for humans constipating they can they, they actually bring a lot of stress they they can be uh, putrificative. They can ta cause toxemia in the body and acidosis. What, so flesh proteins, as we know it, we can even smell other people's other more intense. They sweat more, like all this stuff out because the body can't even handle that well. So we smell all of that, what actually they are keeping inside. And we can notice when raw vegans are eating their fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. We don't. We don't even smell the odor of these people. That's how. Oh, simple, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's very easy to be around this, <laughs> this yeah. kind of humans. It so, sounds cocky, like you know. It sounds cocky when we say that, but it's true. You know, it's crazy. Even if I've had anything over the last few years that isn't like raw vegan or super clean. Like I notice a difference in how I smell like almost instantly. And I'm like, what the hell? Like what, or what the heck, you know? Yeah. What the heck is that? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I think when someone asks me, what kind of perfume do you use? Well, 
No, and I think my food is my perfume because the way I eat, my my body odor smells like that fruit, that certain fruit, or or doesn't have smell at all. It's odorless. So, yeah, uh, yeah, that's so true. And and that's another interesting thing about my favorite fruit that it's durian. That some people like it, some people hate it. And what I discovered personally that people who eat cooked food, I even talked about it with Eli Martyr. Yeah. I was like, Eli, you know what I like discovered? Like, I just noticed that people who eat cooked food, they they don't really appreciate durian. They can't even stand no. this. But they just, it, they need to puke after smelling it. And, Literally. And, right? Yeah. And I'm like, but when they have that raw food more and they clean up the bodies, we actually can even taste the plant flavor. We don't taste garlic in it yeah. anymore. Yeah, it's a totally different experience. So yeah, yeah. I think it's amazing. Oh, amazing. You're so happy. I love it. You're such good vibes. Everybody commented when you were on last that you're just the sweetest soul and so amazing. Aww. And I know. So the next question Katie was asking, she said she'd love to hear more about your healing journey. So I know people wanted to hear a little bit more about your healing journey. And if you wanted to share, they were asking too what specific like herbs you used, or mm -hmm. just if you could expand a little bit on your journey. Absolutely. I will be more than happy and I will let myself to go to my website very quick <laughs> <laughs> to include everything that I would like to say what I healed because I have everything here in order. So I don't want to miss anything. And while you're doing that, I just want to say I'm so happy for you. I've noticed in your Instagram stories that you have some new raw vegan food products that you're making, creating and supplying to some of the stores in Hawaii, right? Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Such a big thing is happening. Yes. I am so honored and blessed on the, with this, uh, that having such a beautiful souls around me that they are supporting the pro project. And the, it was really like the door was open mm. and I'm like, let's enter because I, you know, <laughs> open up. I only enter the open <laughs> all the open doors. I don't go somewhere where the door is closed. So I'm like, it's so open. I just feel so loved on if it comes to this project. Yes, I uh, we started with a farmers market. So my products uh, started going to the farmers market. I support also a Satvik kitchen uh, that I work for as well here. So uh, sending you lots of blessings to these beautiful souls that I am uh, happy to work with here on Maui. And uh, we support local farmers. And so anyone who is a local here, please come join us. <laughs> and we deliver beautiful, fresh, organic food from uh, Maui. So to some individuals, if there is an individual order or some stores as well. And uh, plus my uh, products as well, and yes, and I started with like simple recipes that I've been having since I started my raw vegan journey. And, and that was very like super long time ago, like in my early age, like when I was a little girl, literally, when I started creating something in the kitchen, I'm like, that's as simple as it can be. I don't need anything else. Uh, so the cocoa and nut balls, uh, fruit balls, all the special names, uh, unique names that we created. Then a uh, raw carrot cake now, uh, I introduced a new one. That uh, looks so uh, good, the raw carrot cake. I see it on your uh, feed. I'm just like, wow. Yeah, please. Uh, when you will be in Maui. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I want to come down one day. <laughs> yes, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. And so you're in Maui. Do you think that you would be doing this lifestyle if you were in a cold climate? Like if you, I live in Toronto, right? So with Eli and he's a fruitarian here. Yeah. We are blessed in Toronto because we have some of the most amazing produce that comes here but it is very cold for many months. So do you think you would still do it if you lived here or somewhere cold? Yes, I think there's no doubt about it because I left uh, as a fruitarian back to New York. I was having a beautiful experience living there as a fruitarian and I experienced that Manhattan life. <laughs> that was really cool and yeah. always had my fruit with me. And that was super cold winter there, super cold, extremely cold. And oh, and I still was fruitarian and I didn't get cold as much as I used to. Wow. So yeah, yeah. And before, you know, and, and, and I used to live in Poland, in Europe a lot too. So, and I, 
you know, I, I really always was following this lifestyle. I never was like, unless uh, I was under some influence and they were like pushing stuff on me, then it's a different story. But other than that, when I was like my with myself, always fully raw. And even yeah. when I lived alone uh, by myself, I was just like, no, like now I feel free. I can do anything I want. <laughs> yeah. so I was just bringing all the fruits and salads in my fridge and yeah I remember that day so I still would do that I think is it the best to do if someone would ask me on it right now especially when everything is looking mm-hmm. good I think it has to be spiritual call because I get many questions like this. I got on Instagram recently and someone asked me also to answer this question here. Question here so if you don't mind yeah. before I start about healing the journey. Yeah. They start they ask me, "Hey, how how did you deal with being fraternal in New York?" And and you know and I appreciate these questions, all these questions, but I've never heard anyone telling me how they deal with stuff it was just spiritual call so Mm -hmm. I think that's why it was super simple for me that I didn't even need to seek for the answers because the answers were just showing up my way like you're just on another level Magdalena (laughs) (laughs) I think everyone here has their own mission and everybody has something else to bring in this be- be the beauty with them, uh, you know, each and every one of you with on this journey. So I think that's that's what it is, too, you know. And so I believe that everyone ha- has this beauty, insight and a gift that can bring something unique and new into this world. And and if that's the word being on fruit, then I would be more than happy to support the, the these beautiful spirits and how did I deal with this I was just following the the door that was open that's the simple side as it gets and I I really if I felt like I am limited I was just like okay I'm gonna wait hold on to it I can do better stuff in the meantime so yeah I think and I, I trust me I didn't have anyone anyone around me that was following this lifestyle Everybody was looking at me like a weirdo. I didn't really worry about it. I'm like, mm-hmm. but then I, I'm going to prove you in the future that I'm going to be really healthy. And and I didn't want to prove them, of course, but that was yeah. the thought process behind it too. Yeah. And, 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 and like, I am alive. <laughs> I feel great. So I healed so much. So yes, I think I would. And and I'm not surprised that you guys are following your beautiful journey as well in Toronto, because if you have access to the beautiful fruit and you feel your call inside that it's that call. Then... And how do you like you talked a bit about mission and everyone being here like for their own mission and like their own purpose, right? And how do you think people can find that if they feel lost and they really don't know what that is? I love this question. I I love this question so much. I think I... I have a privilege to teach that as well in interna- Dr. Morse's International School of the Healing mm. Arts and Sciences. My course, a course is actually released too. And and so everybody can take it. It's I'll link a, it below. Yes, that yeah. would be amazing. So yeah. I, te- I teach that. I, I'm, I'm like the course, the Bio Art Science of Healing is ready, you know, and I literally explain everything there. There is like so many hours of <laughs> filming, professional film class in Florida for Charlotte. And this this course will teach you how to, how the creative arts influences healing t- through vision, perception, touch, smell, scent, emotions, colors, and alike, and spirituality at the very end to summarize everything and put in a one big bubble of all these beautiful energies. You will learn about the body aura. So also this one I included there, the power of artistic shapes, as well as science and the beauty of interpretation of all of that. You can be empowered with DIY strategies for physical healing you know, of body and nervous system. 
Mm -hmm. And for strengthening the, your immune system, all these aspects, like to make your kidneys filtering on that level, to help your DNA working better, how to expand your spiritual growth through live art and meditation, exercise. There are so many ex uh, meditation and creation. And there's so many exercises as well that I, uh, that the student has to go through uh, to feel and open up that heart and all these chakras to enter that other level to find themselves. And we, uh, and I even said on that course many times that you can find your own gift. You can discover why, what's your, what you're here for, what's your mission deep inside and what's best for you as well. Because mm -hmm. true heal, it's like a true, also true healing through the divine expression uh, by discovering the hidden potential in your mind, body, and soul. That's, I think, the most beautiful. Wow. Well said. And you were talking about how you go through the doors that are open, right? Just like it was meant to be with your new food products, all that. So yeah. how do you know when it's the right path and the door is open and that is the way we should go versus like when the door is closed and like not to go down a certain road? That's a really amazing question as well. I think the simplicity, the lightness of the situation, I experience on this life. So after detoxing my body, cleaning up, I feel support. I feel my masters like talking through me, telling me this is right. Don't touch that one. That's a bad energy. I just see the auras as well. I think the creation of helping to you to understand the auras, how the auras actually work and what they really are, how you can learn how to uh, explain and discover other aspects of this. And I think once you understand the whole priority of this, that it's carrying within on the daily basis, you will feel what's best for you. I, I It really took me so many years to feel that way. I, I Did I have that intuition, that deep intuition before? I had but not that deep. No, there's no way. Now, now I feel like I, this is the best time in my life if it comes to my spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. It's just, you feel just super light. It's just like, let's say, this is interesting. Oh, this is a great example. Last time I bought a new car here and I was driving my first day. I was going to DMV to literally deal with all the paperwork. Mm hmm and something was telling me, don't drive this road, go other way. Hmm. What did I do? I didn't listen because that's what we usually do. No, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not fear. <laughs> I'm not in yeah. a fear. <laughs> Boom. The South Key Hill Road. Oh. And the big yellow school bus hit the car behind me and six other cars i was the sixth <gasps> car in the row <laughs> that was wow that was run in my back literally broke the window broke my whole trunk and i was the actually the first one in that collision but the safest one cuz no nothing was in front of me and the police uh, came over and he's like wow you're a hero of this accident you didn't hit anyone <laughs> and I'm like, well, because I kept self self distance between the yeah cars, but literally everything was broke, uh, broken. And what that was, I know that's a that was a warning to me. See why you silly goose didn't follow your intuition because I know that it was not meant to be for me. But I still was I was just like whatever. I just want to get there fast. And do you feel um, like the intuition that's like God talking to us? Yes. Yeah. The universe, the God. And it was telling you, I know, see, but what happened to me? I got hit from the back. I, I, it was really, I've never, I've never had a car accident. So that to me, that was traumatic for a little bit. I was shaking, mm -hmm. but maybe differently shaking because the police look at me and say, are you okay? And I'm like, I have a glass in my mouth. I had a full mouth of glass because the glass from the wow. back really bounced and hit the cockpit. And then like somehow I had to have my mouth open during the accident and got everything in my mouth. They gave me a water. They brought me a bottle of water with like everybody was drinking from that. 
and they are like, uh, you know, wash your mouth in. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, I, I think I prefer to have that glass in my mouth. And I just started <laughs> spitting it out because yeah. I didn't even want to use that water. <laughs> <laughs> I had my water later. So, uh, so yeah, I had, I spit that glass. I was like spitting. The policeman was talking to me like, do you know what happened? I'm like, uh, not really. I, I just heard breaks and stuff like that. So I was shocked a little bit. But how I reacted, he was just like, you're so calm. He was like, you're so calm. I think you're the one and only person from this accident I can talk to. The first car that was wow. hit by the bus was like literally folded like a sandwich. It was really bad. So maybe uh, it's the I fruit, put- you know, because it's like Eli, he says that the fruit lifestyle just makes him so calm. And I've noticed that too. Like when, especially like if I'm like super high fruit, like low fat or on a fruit cleanse, I feel much more calm too. See, and this is that this is the lightness that you feel also with uh, making any decisions Mm -hmm. that's the same feeling i feel so Mm -hmm. it gave me that lightness the angel was like go this way no i got this way (laughs) the other side was like "Mm, i'm curious what's out there Uh, (laughs) but see what happened i actually what i experienced i definitely experienced something that didn't hurt me much that hurt me a little bit because I needed to get some massages on my back and stuff but it wasn't nothing like these people behind me I was just like safe like I I didn't even like and the the police was like five minutes later okay I'm just gonna grab your ID took some stuff and he's like okay you can go you're fine and then do you feel like you learned from that and then you were like then you started to listen more to your instincts after that yes and that hit that me hit me hard. That happened this year, a, a, a few months ago, and then and then then I was just like, ah, "Do you want me to go this way? Huh? But you want me to go this way? Huh? How I feel about both of them?" And I just kind of feel where I ask, "What's the best for me to do at that moment?" And I it's just so light, and I just don't even need to think anymore. I don't even need to ask right now because it's just so simple. It just feels. Mm-hmm. Here's another thing. I never ask to change the what's the what the universe has already created for us. So every questions that you ask, you can overwhelm the situation and you're gonna get karma back and you can get really the unpleasant experience. It could be a beautiful experience, but also bringing unpleasant side effects. So that's why this is what I also teach in the, on my course to understand how to separate these things how to feel them how to open up yourself to these things and uh, i i really need to tell you that while i was teaching this course i was healing i was healing so deeply that i even cried we we all cried there a couple of times the energy was like amazing like where i was like showing how energy flows like my hands were going apart then we're going in like, I think that has to be experienced on that course and see how it really looks. And, oh, mind blown. I I really experienced such a beautiful time with all the individuals there. And, and yeah, that was beautiful. And with Dr. Morse, uh, of course, on top, like, first of all, <laughs> uh, as a first experience of all uh, mm-hmm. of that uh, class yeah so that was amazing strength and power yeah I I you know I feel like life is so easy and I know I don't want to sound, sound cocky <laughs> but I was complicating my life too I was just mm-hmm. like but why why am I making it so difficult as if it's mm-hmm. so easy so I just accept I'm, I'm just like I love the life and it brings me more beauty in my space you know Mm. and I think that's the growth that I had to go through (laughs) as well I feel like you're on a beautiful path thank you thank you so much and I wish everyone's to feel that way too you know I think the world would be such a beautiful miracle if we could do that and and you know that power is the strongest power strongest energy in the world in this world, on this planet that we can imagine because it's like love. Love mm-hmm. will win, always wins. And same here is with, I believe, with a positive energy. It can really take over and take 
all the bad energies and put in a like go bye yeah. bye yeah bye bye you yeah. don't need to come back I of know. course they need to be balanced right so they have yeah. to be around but uh, to balance because we would be too happy but see even with the tragic situations i would deal way better than i would in the past that's definitely a huge huge um huge big 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 influence of my lifestyle wow see it's amazing how what we consume and like how much we cleanse ourselves out can do for us right it's just it's amazing yeah well yeah i'd love to sorry go ahead no 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 just want to say that i would love to say more but i think that's what the class is for the whole course really it brings so much beauty and 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 uh, it's just working on yourself and sometimes it's good to be a little selfish but in not in a na- narcissistic way mm-hmm. uh, but focusing on your growth if i wouldn't focus on my growth right now i wouldn't be where i am today mm-hmm. um so i think you wouldn't be where you are today you're focusing True. on yourself as well you you treat your body as a temple right so i do the same thing i feel best and i follow it and it took me really many years to understand a lot of aspects and and i i don't regret anything it would be cool to know a lot of things or maybe we know them but to remind all of these things mm-hmm. uh, sooner mm-hmm. in my life than now but again i feel that it's even more beautiful that i it's so exciting that in the five years or ten years of this lifetime a lifetime on this planet earth you will discover even more uh things uh that are right how how cool is that that we can dive in deeper open opening that up that layers layer by layer and dig in into the beautiful uh, crystals i don't want to say diamonds because i'm not into diamonds but Mm -hmm. crystals Mm-hmm. You know, the crystal world that it's there and you can feel rich inside, not in a materialistic mm-hmm. way, but when, you know, having millions inside of your body, it's just like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> the way you feel, yeah, about yourself. It's, wow, it's so potent. It's so powerful. So amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I'd love for you to expand on the healing and that would help, I think, for anybody who didn't see the first video too. Like, cause like I said, the viewers were asking, they want to hear more about your healing journey and any of the herbs you want, you used and stuff like that. Yes. So I maybe start, see, I suffered from a very young age with a lot of health, co- chronic congestions chronic acidosis acidosis in the body and it started in a young age when they wanted to remove my female reproductive system because they claimed that i have a cancer there so with that being said i was maybe 17 (laughs) or maybe maybe 18 and the gynecologist told me she wanted to just and i have to say i'm really sorry to interrupt but i have to say you look like you're 17 or 18 now and you're like 37, oh, right? Or how old? Oh, oh, don't have me that one. Here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I don't really mind. I'm 4,000 years old, Saul, so, and 35 years old, young. 35, yeah. Body. You look so young. On this planet. Yeah. It, the <laughs> lifestyle. You. Okay. So I didn't interrupt. And October 29th. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Doctor, oh yeah, same birthday as my husband. That's right. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I won't interrupt the story me. anymore. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. What oh, I was saying about the 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 oh the the they wanted to remove the body parts in a women section there down in the roots chakra. And I was just like, Mom, I remember that. I was just like, they said I don't have a cancer. Mm. I have to go to the hospital. So mm-hmm. think about it. As a young teenager thinking that way no the, it's already that information that it's passed by uh, to into the cells and the cells listening to you they listening what is happening outside you create a very 
a negative chemistry, acidic chemistry in the body from that uh, information, just simple information from one person. And my mom is like, no, you're going to go to the different the gynecologist and he will have to tell you what's going on again. And we'll see what he's going to say. I went to the other one and the other gentleman said, you are so healthy. Wow. And I'm looking at him. I didn't tell him what the previous gynecologist told me. And I said, uh, you know, like I, I, doc, I just, I just, just heard like literally two days ago that I, I, I have to go to the hospital to remove my reproductive system apart because I have a cancer and he's looking at me. Who said that? So the reality is, wow, they're teachers and they're teachers. They're aridologists, they're aridologists, they're doctors, they're doctors, because they're also people. And mm-hmm. they're, they're beautiful, there are beautiful people, and there are people that sometimes are have a bad judgment on s- wrong, they're wrong. They can be also sometimes on the path that you may be shocked with the, the some decisions, some recommendations. That's why it's always I would always advise to seek for additional help than one person, like if True. it comes mm-hmm. that journey. So But summarize, because it will take so long after that. So I didn't give up. Of course, I was still like, and I was already also on my raw journey. Mm -hmm. That was the time when I was like doing my raw vegan things. And then I had also removed my tonsils. My tonsils were removed in a very young age too. And because I was always sick (laughs) through my entire life, I had so much congestion, congestion in my mouth here always swollen you know like i can i had all the diseases i think that are possible to have in my childhood and once they removed it i stopped being sick with that being said is that a good thing or bad thing well i was happy to not to get sick back then because i didn't dive deeper into healing yet and then oh, oh wow, it's obvious i should get sick like It's good to get sick. And in my opinion, we build up more Mm -hmm. to accept the environment, wild environment, even better later. Uh, So uh, the flu actually helps at the flu. The fever helps to, as we know, uh, kill some viruses, bacteria. Mm -hmm. And we can actually clean up some lymphatic system through that process as well. So getting sick please give me some of that. <laughs> you know, if, if someone is telling me that never get sick, uh-oh, what's wrong here? You know, it's kind of like, I think that then it's like that light. Oh, maybe that person needs some help. So yes, so I had that tonsils removed and and I had that period issues, right? So, so I didn't get my period for a long time because I was traveling since a young age too. It was between the States and Europe a lot and crazy time, crazy stuff. And I stopped having menstruation at all. And so they were fed, feeding me with um, literally hormones for menopause. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I was putting these patches on my arms. But the, the most recent, back to 2017, I have a tibia flatal fracture and torn meniscus. I have a I had a tragic ski accident and I hope I could have died that day. The whole story is on my YouTube channel, Rocco Conan Girl. They're like, I I was impressed the way I was determined to do the whole footage for you. Beautiful spirits. Like I I felt like I am on a mission. I have to record each piece of my journey to have it proven for people in the future. I knew already that. How crazy is that? I, yeah. So, wow. Yeah, and that was back 2017, and literally you can even see me on the videos that it was so innocent to film that. Like, it was super innocent move, and then all of a sudden, boom, it was my story of my life to actually prove and show people how my leg looked and how I was disabled for so long, and I was in a wheelchair for a while, and and I seen the world very, 
like at a low level like i couldn't even like see a lot of things because being on a wheelchair so i felt these people on the wheelchair and now when i see all these people i'm just there to help them out and and i'm so happy to do that so there's always a there's always i think hope please never lose your hope because some people don't give us that hope but you need to always remember that you are on this high journey to well will and you can heal anything at any age and i like to add mm -hmm. anything at any stage so that's my whole motto toward tendon in my foot after these surgeries <laughs> that it's reconnecting I, I we were talking about it too mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. still working on it i even had uh, some uh, issues last time oh, i was uh, at the farm uh, here in kula i was like it, with my boots i can't wear boots anymore and i couldn't step on that foot my foot hated shoes because i walked barefoot for wow. a, yeah. a few years now yeah over wow. a decade I'd say. so my my feet don't really like boots anymore and I, thought, <laughs> I love it yeah and I was like oh I'm gonna do barefoot and I was looking barefoot everybody was looking at me you can't do barefoot here like you, you can't do that do that because you know I'm like but why I can't that's a good question I, I'm not yeah. scared of the bags is there something that I should know <laughs> more about that why I shouldn't put my foot into something that I, I'm not aware of but yeah but so that's another thing so in i think the weakness that the body the foot was um, like trapped in the shoe that is kind of you know shoes are designed to re rebuild our foot mm -hmm. at some level so i think i came back to the original originally built structure structure of my foot right the way it should be after these uh, after cleansing my body and lymphatic moving my lymphatic system and making my kidneys faltering but the shoes actually were yeah trapping that fat foot so i could feel the weakest still part in my foot which was my tendon mm. that was torn so but it stopped after i just stopped wearing shoes so wow uh, yeah, I, I no pain. I can just literally wear sandals, but it has to be like open, flat. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, so you can feel the the difference, right? Then I had fibrocystic breast since the age of eighteen. I healed that fibrocystic breast. For those who don't know, is when you have a lot of inflammation in the breast area, and mm. it's really hard to touch super hard to touch like you can hear if you hear you can hear maybe too when you put your you know mm -hmm. ear on how congested that area is but you can feel how many how to call it mm, hard like a ball shape you know like a mucus that it's hardening after a while it's gathered in this area and you can literally i recommend all ladies to just check out if you have uh, some ball shapes in your uh, breast i think it's good to think about detoxing it out um so i had that too they were telling me that i may have breast cancer so they wanted to do they they were like she's so young for mammography but maybe we'll consider that so they were even considering that i remember uh, that was the last call that they want to do that and i'm like i'm not di diving deeper into it i'm not i don't want x-rays on my breast i don't want anything and i think that was the time where i was finally awakened i'm like what's going on i'm not doing any of that mm -hmm. i'm just gonna follow my food thing and so that's is gone uh, the breast got, got bigger too so for those who want to have bigger breasts you don't need surgeries beautiful ladies <laughs> yeah yeah the body when you it produce healthy hormones and it's balanced thyroid pyrothyroid pituitary reproductive system everything is in balance gi tract is clean kidneys are filtering this will be in a beautiful shape and it will be perky too you don't need to worry about wearing brass like i don't wow. i have stopped wearing brass yeah i haven't worn brass for <laughs> you were <like> amazing <laughs> And I want to ask you, well, you know how there's yeah. like charts that show 
that certain foods are good for certain body parts and it's real. They have but like, like the walnuts, walnuts look like the brain and they're very beneficial for the brain. Grapes look like the lungs and they're very beneficial for the lungs. And there's just so many things. I think it's the tomato with the heart. I forget, but there's so many things, right? So what do you, do you think there's specific foods that are good for the breasts? Do you remember what it is? Is it grapefruits? Grapefruits, I think, right? Or am I just thinking that no, like even when they're cut open, I'm not just I didn't even like the I think every fruit is amazing <laughs> by itself because I didn't focus on certain fruit to fix my breast. Yeah. yeah. I did just cleansing. I used herbs. I used the most important to make your kidneys filtering. So anything that makes your kidneys filtering, it's great. Some people experience more things. See, this is like I think two other sides. One is uh, the question for people who want to rebuild their body and want or rebuilding their body and want to get that strength and the other people who want to heal. Mm-hmm. So if you want to heal, it would be different and mm-hmm. different for, for those who want to rebuild or they want to keep up with the having that strength in the body. Yes, walnuts uh, can be beautiful for the brain, but just in the limited. Yeah, amount. of course knowing how much uh, how many of them uh, mm. nuts, uh, and all other nuts uh, of course that's the the frugivore species food as well that it's included in that frugivore world right to consume yeah so that one yeah I'm, i believe it's connection i believe it comes from our kind of body it's like we are but one so we connect with the food as well like meat doesn't look like anything that we have in a body you know what i mean like like uh um, and it just doesn't look at appealing. Like I never look at an animal dead or alive and think like, I want that's food. I want to eat that. Yeah. You know, like yes. I just, I never do. It's just, you know, I don't know. It's I, I just don't like, I mean, you know, I can understand if people are in the middle of nowhere and it's back in the day and there's like no, yeah. no food and they have to survive. But nowadays with all the abundance of like all these amazing foods we have to look at the animals, like I just, I don't get it. I mean, whatever. Yeah. At the same time, I don't judge people. Yeah. But it's not for me. Yeah, I think they believe what they want to be- believe. And I truly believe that the truth will come up first anyway. So I think there's some closed chakras in some people's mind, minds, and they can't understand what's the truth, what the, what the hell the truth is about. The truth mm-hmm. is about. Maybe there is no even difference between that they can't recognize the difference so i think this is a big part see when i had a a, also after these surgeries i got very bad pancreas issues super bad i had yeah i went through some they also thought that they may be cancerish and how Uh, old were you when that happened you weren't fruitarian then right no that was 2017 that was after anastasia's that i got so many times four times anastasia like uh during short period of time that happened after Anastasia's and I already was on my path. But, but, you know, when you were under Anastasia so many times, it's it, mm-hmm. they're toxic, you know? So even doctors were telling me they're toxic. So, yeah, you know, super toxic. And that's why you signature some documents because you may never wake up. So yeah, <laughs> there is a reason for that. But I healed that. I healed that and I don't have that issue anymore. I had like leftovers in my poop. I I could, you could clearly see that my pancreas is way not the way it should be. And I healed. I don't have that issue anymore. It's beautiful and no more gastrointestinal digestive issues as well. So all this GI tract is really healed and I got them genetically from my parents too. Mm -hmm. So they're still healing. It's a long journey, but but it's way better than it was. I finally absorbed the nutrients. I don't have deficiencies because I absorb nutrients. Hair, hair, skin in general, everything, the eyes getting brighter. Uh, I have very dark, dark, almost black. I used to have uh, the uh, dark black eyes and, and no anymore. They're really brightening up. And wow. that I think everyone will tell who is on the raw vegan journey. I had a helicobacter pyroli too, uh, mo- uh, like a fungus in the body, all over the body, right? So in my stomach, I had, uh, what's the call, ulcers in my stomach. <laughs> I had a like, 
internal bleeding from the ulcers in my stomach that I had to be <laughs> literally sent to the hospital ASAP so they can check and do the gastroscopy, colonoscopy. So they checked me on both sides. That was the worst experience I ever had. Oh. Um, I know. And the, uh, from the gastroscopy, I, I didn't even get, like, I wasn't put to sleep. Like, I, that was just, they just were putting it in when I was fully aware. Horrible. Mm, oh, man. And oh. I done it once in my life and I will never do it again. My mom suffered for, from celiac disease and she was super close to be a, on a cancer level where the tissues were like done and dead, uh, but she rebuilt it. She changed her diet. That's how we also started with our all our journeys in my family. Just everything started from the diet, mm -hmm. uh, what we eat. And she rebuilt all the, all the uh, things in a colon. Uh, to absorb and utilize so that there are some little hair, right? There are like thousands of them or even more than that. I, I'm not really familiar with the number, but there are millions of them because they're so tiny, little hair that helps to move the food through mm -hmm. the colon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she didn't have almost none, like everything was red and inflamed from the food that she used to consume. So once she started healing that, that was amazing experience also. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, moles started disappearing, falling. I still have some of them on my body. I had a lot, way more than that, though. Vision improvement, malabsorption, fixed. So many. I really highly encourage everyone who wants to see to go to my website. Yeah, first. you have you're it's great. And did you like are there certain particular herbs that you felt were like super powerful with your healing? Like a few or like two or three or any that you felt like really helped? So I, I don't, I think through two or three herbs may not be enough to heal on the level. If mm -hmm. you, someone wants to really heal fully, mm -hmm. and there is a whole component of herbs that I've been using. I've been using first of all, spiritual path approach. So what I feel is best for me. Second of all, I used herbs from Dr. Morse's clinic as well. And I only followed the original source. I didn't buy other stuff and unless I, I was supporting like Hawaiian farm here that has herbs as well, but I know where they take it from. So they're wild crafted, organic, unhybridized, clean, pure, and they are the most potent. So, yeah, so I was working on that. So that would be really unfair to tell people two or three herbs or one herb uh, specifically mm -hmm. because that that would just be okay i'm gonna just stop on this and they limit themselves they don't grow deeper they don't dive deeper into it where we need to really get to the root of the problem so that's why I, my consultations are hours of length <laughs> if it comes to know more deeper the each individual you know i want to understand what's going on i want to here, where is the problem? Maybe we shouldn't start with herbs. Maybe we should start with the emotional part first mm. and the healing this and do the transition, six months transition, three months transition protocol. And then we dive in deeper into healing. Yes. So, so I would do that and, and specifically working on good herbs. That's what I would recommend to know the source of them, where they're coming from. Yeah. But I think that's the most important to know. Yeah, absolutely. And work okay. with the specialist. That's what I would suggest because I didn't have a guidance that I would love to have. So now I really am serving people and giving that what I've never received, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah. that makes total sense. Well, the yeah. same the same viewer was asking for you to, to expand a little bit more mm -hmm. about your out of body experiences, which I think is a great question. I love this one. <laughs> These are such a beautiful questions I'm receiving here today. No, I know my viewers are just the most beautiful people on earth. So <laughs> this is why they are. And your channel is very kind and full of love. And Thanks. I think, yeah. And I think that's why people are attracted to yeah. Kindness, the love mm -hmm. and the way you present beautifully, everyone, you know, you, you yeah. let us to speak up fully. It's not like, okay, we are limited. Okay. It's yeah. been enough. Or let's cut it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, so it's beautiful. Thank you for doing that for each and every one of us and also for all these people who are would love to follow and don't feel alone anymore, right? Mm-hmm. Because they see that there are so many of us. <laughs> I know. That's what I always hear lately. Everyone, like a lot of my viewers are messaging me to say, thanks so much. I don't feel so alone now because they're like, you know, mm-hmm. no one's on this lifestyle. These videos and all these different stories and perspectives are helping me feel not so alone. So I love that. See, I, I like you mentioned that because that would that would be connected to the out of body experience question with how I feel about the planet. Like I don't feel home on this planet at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So do I feel alone? I think that's that alone stage. Like kind of like I don't feel like I'm connected. I, I I know I feel like Maui is my home. Like I'm rooted here, but like uh, spiritually, especially that I could talk hours about it. But how I feel it. But but it, if it comes to the planet. I feel like home is a different universe. Like Mm -hmm. I'm just not even like, I think many of us can feel that way. I even talked to my mom about it two days ago. Literally, I'm like, mom, I don't feel like this is my home, this plant. And she's like, I feel like that. Like, I feel the same. I don't feel like either. (laughs) Me too. Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah. So we have to have connection with other words and we can connect to these words. So the out of body experience actually it's a great way to do it but super careful please be super careful with that and i also talk and teach that on my course as well so i am really inviting for that because it's a super huge deal to understand how to protect yourself how to not to enter certain ways and be pro- not to not to make yourself suffer <laughs> later with the karma that you may experience Different experiences come with your experience and path and strength and progress or regress that you are on. So sometimes these out-of-body experience can be helpful and sometimes you need to be careful of them. And from the future events, you don't really know what to happen. So you can actually predict what can happen also based on the out-of-body experience. There's so many varieties of OBE, I would say. From the universe star uh, star power, I like to call it. <laughs> yeah. That's how I just, my personal name for that. Petal lotus tree that it's known in some cultures really well. Mm-hmm. And the tree of life, right? As we know, the tree of life. I assume many of you have seen Avatar's movie. That's what you can experience, uh, really. That's the that's why I think these people who created this movie they're super conscious and aware of the whole thing, how how everything looks, and they co- can connect through these channels. Another word, another kind would be crossing through the different dimensions, different worlds from the from the looking out of this world like on your life in a different world, you feel the spirits, you don't necessarily see them in that other world. You can experience life in the different dimensions, but you don't see spirits because mm-hmm. they're different. That You can feel them. You can feel, that's hard to explain, but that's how I feel about it. That where I coming from, the future. I, I teach this in my in one, one of my courses too that you can predict that future, how to do it, how to do it safe, to not to predict. It's, of course, in a bracket. It's a different meaning uh, completely in that matter. The one you can feel yourself in other lives at the same time. You can experience, you experience life in one body, but we experience more lives on this planet at the same time, but we Mm -hmm. are not aware of that. Mm -hmm. So that's something as well, I believe, it's worth to dive in deeper into that, what I learned, what I feel, the the OBE that you can connect with other spirits that passed, that left this life as well, right? There's another one. With this one, I would be very careful too. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, and another one that literally that you can see yourself in the past, in the future. I would avoid the caching records once. A lot of people are dealing with them that they're coming back to their past and traumas to open up these wounds. And that's k- kind of scary. That can be, I, I I teach about it in my class as well. I, I talk about it a lot there. You know, I'm, I, 
it's it's the, just the truth. There's so many to understand on this path. And once you understand one thing, I think everything else will be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, that makes sense. I'm on the same plane. So I think there's just some things that needs to be opened up for some sp- souls here on this planet to just, wow. yeah, to just, to, that would be my answer. I think there's so many aspects. It's hard to pick one. But I experienced a lot of them, plenty of them, <laughs> from receiving information from my masters, from my God, to me being in other dimensions. Holy, holy moly, like the the world there looks out of this world. It's not even the colors, the smell, the sense, like this the, the in general, like like you can see yourself in different looking forms of beings (laughs) i would say and that either other dimensions there's so many millions of uh, galaxies so you know Mm -hmm. we can we're definitely not alone here so no and do you think you would experience these levels of connection like this if you didn't eat this way see i think nothing can touch our spirituality i think we are safe on that level however i feel like this helped me to open up that door without being attacked by other entities Mm -hmm. so that's protection protective mode that's for sure this lifestyle had the way you do it now you will bring to the next one next life Mm -hmm. so the way i feel that's what i'm just saying like i'm i'm not telling everyone out changing their beliefs i'm just feeling this is just my personal experience what i experienced right So I think this is something crucial here to to understand how this works. And, and, you know, you may feel like this is not path for you yet, then just please wait for that, that Holy Holy Spirit, like they say, right? And I, I got that feeling many times that Holy Spirit got in me and told me what to do. Like I didn't even need to try. It just, I just, I just did it, made it or created something that I didn't even know how to do it. But how did I know how to do it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I didn't know know, because no one taught me that. But how do I know it? Because I believe we bring it from our past life. So I don't think I would be definitely not at the level where I am today because it brings you calmness, peace. That's also a spirituality a part of it, a respect, the way you treat others, the way you treat your body. The more I put fruit in this, I have more out-of-body experiences that sometimes I need to limit myself and have that salad. And I just need to force myself to have sometimes, even though if I don't crave it or have some fat too, Mm -hmm. because I just don't feel grounded. And I feel like I speak a different language to some people and they're just like looking at me are you okay? <laughs> I'm more than okay. I just, I think I need a spiritual buddy that can feel the same. So yeah, yeah. it's a, how you can feel. So I don't, I think this is super opening up the safe areas of this mm-hmm. spiritual journey. Mm-hmm. And I also think it protects you. And I'll, what else is opening up deeper? I think mm-hmm. you are not unlimited at that point you mm-hmm. know when it, with the cooked food and stuff I don't feel as spiritual if, where I was eating I was spiritual but not me you know. too yeah with the cooked food me too and even if like I'd had some cooked food over the last few years it just mm-hmm. at those like probably like a handful of days over the past six years but even every time it just feels like I have like this disconnection to my higher self and like it's gone it's like and I know that's not the case for everyone I know people can still be deeply spiritual no matter how they eat but for me it cuts off the like the my spiritual side Mm -hmm. right and yeah you you can feel it so imagine like the I don't know uh, someone on a sad American standard American diet sad (laughs) diet yeah and they tell you they're spiritual and you start talking to them but they're starting to talk, uh, to talk many of these uh, beautiful spirits. They have potential. But I feel, no, the energy is off. 
-hmm. It's just like they try to, Mm -hmm. they have that sense, they get, they discover. But I think it's kind of like they're on a slow mode, slow motion. So they're do they're gonna get somewhere, but it's gonna be super slow, and maybe not in in this lifetime, maybe next lifetime. Mm-hmm. So I believe that this path is making it faster, deeper, and and I think that's why I feel the way I feel about my spiritual growth. Amazing, this beautiful, you're amazing. Well, I'll get on to the next question. So the next question, oh, this is a good question, which I'm sure a lot of people will want to know. They said they would love to hear your morning, evening, and beauty routines. Well, (laughs) when I wake up, I try to not to look at my phone. Sometimes it's hard. I always stretch in my bed a lot. So you improve your circulation, guys, everywhere to each of your like body parts. That's my favorite thing. What else I do? I do dry dry brush a lot. I, there is a video on YouTube available on my YouTube channel, Rocker Con Girl, if you would like to check it out, how to dry brush correctly. I've been doing this for years and I, I truly believe it helps the structure of the body, the way it looks. Uh, I talk to myself a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like <laughs> I do. I talking. I'm talk. I'm talking to myself. Like, hi, Magdalena. Good morning. I, uh, you know, things like that. Just positive aspects. I don't uh, follow any certain affirmations. I just talk to myself. The, like the. Uh, divine is telling me to say something to myself so i'm repeating that you know if i feel i don't want to talk i'm just like "Mm, you know i need to get up if i didn't sleep well well Mm -hmm. what a bummer i can't be on the other side of dreams still meditation meditation i I like to meditate in the morning if i if my time lets me let me uh, then breathing exercises then i usually jump in the ocean i do it on the beach very often drinking coconut water. I usually find them from the just wild growing uh, palm trees. They're just on the ground. So I I, I like to do that. It's my actually hunt, <laughs> coconut mm-hmm. hunt, daily <laughs> coconut hunt. And healing meditation. I do that too if I feel like I need that. Exercises, simple exercises. And then I work. And sometimes going to bed too late I'm working on it. I'm not perfect. So, you know, it's hard to go sooner when you have mm-hmm. full mind of thoughts that you want to mm-hmm. accomplish and the day is too short and you know something about it. Too, so. yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Listening to the music, to the healing sounds, to the jazz, uh, bl- blues, R&B soul, that's what it's in my soul, literally. That's what heals me. Lymphatic massages that I do too much. So I teach teach and show them on my class as well. All these states, aspects, I think I do what I just, my body requires. I ask my body what it requires and I just mm-hmm. give it to, to it. So that's, that's really my, I, I do. And, and, and cold showers. I, I love cold, super cold showers. So even if it's freezing, like when it's freezing, of course, hot and cold showers then you know it's a different story but when you are mm-hmm. hot outside i crave that cold shower so i love that i do it at a few days sometimes during the day that's i think my own beauty routine honestly morning beauty whatever routine whatever people would like to call it <laughs> and i think i hear the cold showers are really really beneficial like i see a lot of people doing that now and even doing like those bathtub cold plunges and they're like all these they say there's so many benefits to this yeah yeah i mm-hmm. i yeah i believe that there must be a benefit you know you can detox better in a cold climate than a hotter climate you know like some somehow uh, the cold is alkalizing so it helps mm-hmm. to alkaline the body. Mm. Yeah, I, I I admire all these people that can do that. I don't know if I I was in a ice cold uh, um cabin that you the the temperature was super. That's kind of like easier for me 
yeah if i would have, like i jump in the cold super cold in the eau valley we have a beautiful eau valley here mm-hmm. uh gorgeous view and there is like so many waterfalls and you have like literally a river running over the rocks and and this is beautiful so i jump there and it's challenging but once you jump in you feel like oh it feels so good and then you're just leaving the water and you're freezing cold. <laughs> That's even worse. Yeah. Even worse. Uh, but you feel alive. You feel yeah. alive. And yeah. So yeah, I do more natural. I don't put uh, like ice in my bathtub or anything like that. Yeah. I do throw away more. Yeah. I think well, it's more reliable for the skin. True. The body. True. Well, the next question. So Mike said he would like to know what is your favorite fruit? And then also what does she do to be per? to be toned perfectly like this great question because you are what exercise she would recommend and if there's a difference between females and males so I truly believe this question is really really good I think there are different so what my favorite fruit for starting is durian I think I mentioned that before but it also depends like today like I could be on watermelon all day long mm-hmm. I don't create durian today so you know, mm-hmm. it really depends on the day, but my favorite will be also if someone bring me durian, <laughs> if someone brings me durian, then I'm like, oh, you you got me. <laughs> well, when I come down there, I'll bring you a durian. Is oh, durian is so- expensive down there? I bought a durian here. I tried it this year for the first time with Eli. We did a video. We did like a uh-huh. taste testing video with my daughter and her friends. And then we did another video with it. It was fun. But the so, durian, it was like 150 bucks. It was 120 or 150 bucks here. Is it priced like that there? Or is it less expensive? What type, what v- variety of durian did you have? I don't know. I thought was it I don't time? Know. I think Maybe so. that was one. Huh. So, you know, we have durian on the island. It grows here. Uh, on the, We just need to, it's season, seasonal. So we need to wait. Uh, and it's in October, I believe, and any and other months. Late January or February. It tastes different than the Thailand one, the da- the one that comes to Thailand and th- fr- that comes from Thailand. And I need to tell you, uh, there are so many varieties that it's hard to say. Some are cheaper, like there is a Chanel, Chanel, uh, that it's uh, pretty relatively cheap durian. Mm-hmm. I-, I have a friend who is also distributing durian to Maui from Thailand. So uh, oh, if that's I- a good hookup for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So. <laughs> so she she is sending me also some durians when I order uh, and I have different vi- varieties I haven't tried all of them I'm not a like a, you know specialist on that level but but I'm working on it and I'm planning to try all of them before you know before leaving this planet so I have so many of them yeah. <laughs> hundreds of them to try but I there can be pricey we have a price here I think it's like, not to lie to you, it's like 20 bucks per little package where you have like four little little seeds. If okay. they're not big. Yeah. So it can be pricey. However, you know, oh, we have some, uh, oh, maybe I won't tell anyone because they're going to buy all, buy it all if I tell the store where it is. <laughs> but it's here on the island, one store. <laughs> and it came just like beautiful, huge container from Thailand of Durian Mountain. And <laughs> I'm <a little> be secretive. <laughs> and this durian costs like twenty five per uh, per box, and there are like six five to five big seeds. So this one was cheaper. So I don't know. It maybe depends on what what uh, time of the year was picked, uh, what type of the du- durian. That's for sure. Because I know the variety that is the blackthorn durian that cost humongous amount of money, but you know. Honestly, I don't. It, that doesn't bother me because I don't spend money on other things. So mm-hmm. it's still relatively exactly. cheap for me. Yeah, exactly. It's like not 100%. going to the bar, not going to the cinema, and someone will think, "Oh my gosh, she's so her life is so boring now. It's just beautiful because I can afford." <laughs> yeah. Then you can afford many other things instead, and have yeah. the beauty around you. So yeah, <laughs> that's my favorite. When it comes to the exercises and being toned. I think that. See, here's the thing. Before I, when I started this detox journey with herbs, I lost weight. I had my body had to rebuild itself. It took time. So once you release all the mucus, mucus plaque, I still 
probably have some stuff. It's not like you, it's hard to clean completely yourself. It's always something. It's always something around someone is smoking cigarettes, someone's smoking weed. You smell it. You breathe mm-hmm. this through your lungs. Uh, someone is, you see chemtrails. Mm. You eat uh, food that was uh, sprayed with even organic chemicals. You consume it. It's still mm-hmm. there. So mm-hmm. even in a clean body, right? The body will deal with it, but you still have it there. So somehow it needs to be reduced if you want to be healthy. So, yes. So I believe once you clean up the body and you still consume the way you co- the way you eat, you're going to, the body will adjust. The body will create that perfect shape for you. So you true. won't be fat. Yeah. You won't be skinny. And mm-hmm. I never been like skinny on this lifestyle. Even when I lost weight, I was well, like, I lost weight, but I, w- I was just like not looking unhealthy it was mm-hmm. still healthy but the body mass the muscles that you were creating through the acidic food that had to be first detoxed hydrated detox then you can rebuild and mm-hmm. once you rebuild the body will tone itself i really don't exercise much guys uh very simple exercise with the stretching gums uh, with this elastic gums and some like push-ups and things like that and I'm the most active I am we talk with Eli about it too like I'm like I'm I feel so strong with uh with just like dry fasting when I dry fast I just am the most efficient with my exercises I'm just super strong on a dry fast when I don't consume any food because the body doesn't put that energy towards uh, digesting anything and it's focusing on one thing at a time and what's the longest dry fast you've done See, so there are difference because there's like a, a dry fast to make your kidneys filtering. So yeah. I wouldn't say a certain amount of hours. Some some people, uh, I start I started from twelve hours, then I extended to sixteen, then I did eighteen, twenty four, and I think I done. I I don't remember how many times, but I done, uh, thirty six. But do I recommend it? No, I would recommend to consult that with mm-hmm. the specialist before yeah. but I I had that sometimes I had it for my own choice because I was silly not didn't take any food on the volcano or somewhere and I was uh, like just on an adventure mm-hmm. so some stuff just happened uh, and I just had fun but you know I wouldn't do a longer than that I wouldn't do longer than 12 hours on a normal basis like not even dry fast but it would be like intermittent fast so you still would drink, consume some fluids like water or, or like filtered water or uh, juices, tea, teas, herbal teas. But I would be, be would be careful with dry fasting. Once you uh, move your kidneys to filter and you feel like your body requires it, this is that uh, entering into that process of breath or mm-hmm. that different level of consciousness mm-hmm. completely. It's uh, so you once you get there, you feel like your body. When I was juicing, and I, I'm pretty sure you may experience that way, that that as well, that you didn't feel like you are hungry, mm-hmm. right? You mm-hmm. got to the certain level. Yeah, and you go, I'm hungry. Do I really exactly. need to juice? Oh, yeah, because yeah. they told me that I need to juice because it's good to move it, the hydrate. But do I really need to? I don't even feel like I want to juice. I don't mm-hmm. even feel like I'm dr- I want to drink. That's the level where you can experience that. But does it really your call where? You get that spiritual call that you should follow that way. You know, that I think it's a years of preparation before that level. It's not necessary. <laughs> if someone mm-hmm. enjoys their food, why would mm-hmm. you do that? Yeah. I, th- I think if your consciousness and spiritual aspect is asking you for that, I may follow, but I don't feel it right now. I feel amazing the way it is, and I, mm-hmm. I don't feel like changing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a, Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think it's done too. And uh, women and uh, the exercises. I'm, I'm not a bodybuilder person to spend hours at the gym. Maybe one day I will be like that's gonna be my focus, but I don't think so. I I just like that I look like a woman, mm-hmm. <laughs> like more like you know just how to delicate, mm-hmm. like a, just a natural way. You know, you mm-hmm. look beautifully and, thank and, you. The, thank you. and the whole muscles toned, I think it's more like designed for men, but 
but but I don't judge anyone so that mm-hmm. can be beautifully built muscles of course you know mm-hmm. I just focus more on the spiritual growth and flying and other dimensions yeah. that makes me more fun <laughs> yeah I love it amazing <laughs> But well, cool. okay. So the next question, they said, Magdalena, can I regrow my thyroid? Did we talk about it last time? Something we, yeah, have, I think I we think. did a little bit last time, but yeah, they said, can I regrow my thyroid and can I be fruitarian living in Europe? Well, you talked a little bit about doing it in the colder and yeah. So what do you think about that? Yes. I, so I believe we can regrow anything and the cockroach can regrow their body parts. Mm -hmm. Why can't we? I always was thinking that way. Since I was a little girl, I noticed that cockroach can regrow things. I learned that. Wow. On on the country with my family. And I'm like, so if they can regrow, I even remember asking these questions, my parents, like, can we regrow things? And, you know, they... Yeah, I I know I was searching for I was looking for that answer uh, for that answer and I never got that and I finally received that uh, after just being on on a journey we see we experience beautiful regrowth of thyroid of uh, Dr. Morse can talk about it a lot. He was he's showing that the toe regrowing after being amputated, you know, and so you if, wow the body is i believe seeing on my uh, tendon that regenerated itself seeing my 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 other body parts that regenerate ovarianses that i went through right like uh, uh, irregular menstruation no more yellow nails that i had everything can be removed from the blood scoliosis healed so all of this can be really a big aspect of healing Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i think if you have because when they what happening when they remove the organs when the organ is removed from the body uh the energetically that organ is still there Mm -hmm. it's just different universe different a different universe different different world out of but it's still there it's still energetically there so how can we regrow it? It's also spiritual aspect. Yeah, big time, I think. I think so much is like the belief too, right? And a lot of us just believe like there's no way. I think like that might change over time. And like our thoughts and beliefs are just so powerful. We don't even understand. Yes, yes. And I, I and if you have some roots uh, left, you know, sometimes they don't... Um, Mm-hmm. remove the whole thing like I had removed my tonsils mm-hmm. I don't I'm not sure if they left anything there mm-hmm. I know that energetically they're there because I feel them sometimes too which is crazy when I experience a connection with the other ones I'm like but they are not there when I look at physically but I felt them here many times I even feel them now so I I, I feel like they may regrow uh, wow. I believe I will see we're gonna observe me I don't know if I yeah. have any left, so they regrow physically. But I know that energetically they're still there. And if we believe and we want to focus, we we can do wonders. And and that's a part of the course, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At yeah. the my course, well, the so. course sounds pretty awesome. And somebody else said, oh, yeah. Did you want to talk about being fruitarian living in Europe? Oh, how I did that. Oh, if you can. Uh, so, yeah. um. So I think I mentioned that before about that, that um, I would be, you just feel it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I would be a fruitarian anywhere. I was a fruitarian, like I mentioned before, New York, cold climates, California was warmer, Florida is hotter. But any other places that I left, I was always following the, my path and Poland and I was Sweden. I was in Sweden too, and and I saw same thing. And it was cooler. Uh, so any anywhere I tried to follow my my path, and no one could disturb that. I followed my instinct, and it was crazy when I was just hungry. I just followed bananas. I, if I was hungry, I wanted apples, uh, something simple even. But I always was sticking to to the simplest food. And you know, the most important thing is when I was starting and when I was following this. 
a journey, maybe not starting, reminding myself that that's the way I should eat. I would call it that way. I didn't have access to the internet. There was nothing on the internet. Wow. That was uh, yeah. so many years ago. And there was no one following it. And every information I put about a fruit, it was sh- fruit sugar is bad. It mm. will ruin your teeth. It's bad for the, yeah, the diabetic people. Uh, you're going to ruin this and that and that. And I'm like, whoa. And even my friends were telling me, my God, you can't eat that many oranges at once. That's a bad. Don't you think dried fruits are worse for our teeth, though? I, from what I see of the people I interview, anybody on raw vegan or fruitarian, when they seem to have dental problems that I noticed with all these interviews, it's when they were eating like dried fruit, like a lot of dates. And that's what I noticed. The only time raw vegan in six years I've ever had any tooth sensitivity, like I've never had cavities or anything, is if I'm eating dates, like a lot of dried fruit. Absolutely. You're so on point here. I yeah. I, I, I got it the same experience. There yeah. was a time, even last year, I was more stressed and I just started eating more dry fruits. And, yeah. and I was just like, I didn't have time to even go to the store to get food that was that busy. And I got to the point, oh my gosh, what I'm doing to my body. I yeah. stopped taking care of myself, but it was so good. I was chewy and I was just sitting at a computer working. They're so oh, good. <laughs> felt so good by my teeth later. Yeah. I got some cavity, yeah. um, some issues with that. That, there, you know, you can get issues and they will take years later to heal. So just be careful with that, please. And I would recommend always soak dried fruits before consuming it about four hours before eating or even two, just to make them softer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it also helps to remove the mold. Same with the, with all the nuts. I would do the same thing. At all my recipes that I create here on Maui, I always soak my nuts and, and dry fruits. Uh, if Amazing. They, they need to, because sometimes you add water to the recipe, so it will be still soaked. Mm-hmm. in the, the the recipe but i you know there is a certain ways to do certain things and if you need to and if you have dense food then just like try to rehydrate them a little bit uh if it doesn't need to be always you know sometimes mm-hmm. you can do something that is different mm-hmm. you know? mm-hmm. if, if i would crave today some dry mango i would take it like i would have it mm-hmm. it's but it, I would feel dehydrated later. Yeah. So then you drink a lot of water, mm-hmm. hydrated juices. So, mm-hmm. so I would be careful. Yes, they can they can create teeth sensitivity easily, easily, and that's the only one of the problems of this these uh, dry fruits. Uh, yeah, but you can have amazing experience. Like for people who transition, it's still better to do that. In my personal opinion. My humble opinion, please go to dry fruits rather than meat and dairy. Yeah, it can be great to transition. I agree. And very filling for people too. Like if they're trying to transition and like feel hungry all the time. And also for people who are raw vegans and they eat, and no raw vegans, vegans, more vegans, and they eat processed food. Same mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Just dry fruit is always, would be always the, that's why the coconut balls that I make or fruit balls that I make, they, they, they help people to transition. So just take them to go and and you don't need to worry about snack later. You mm-hmm. won't snack on chips. You won't snack on chocolate because that's going to be your pleasure, you know? Mm-hmm. And... Exactly. <laughs> well, the next so... question, I love this question. Anne said she would like to know if there are certain foods to eat to open our chakras and if other foods are harmful for that. And how do we learn about opening our chakras correctly? Can she recommend a website or a book to help us do it correctly and what we should avoid? I love that question. It's beautiful. See, I I don't want to sound full of myself, but my course is really big aspect here of this. So I really advise someone to just Mm -hmm. see the description, what is the course about and try maybe to follow this because that helps to open up with the food and the energy, with the frequency, with the smell, vision, all the perception. So you can really feel that uh, because it's not only about the fruit that it's opening the chakra. It's about the that aspect of spiritual path and growth. And and it's hol- it's a holistic approach. So I believe the way you, there are colors, there are certain fruits that are, will be 
connected to certain chakra. That that's what I explained in so many hours of these classes. It's it it there is potency. Absolutely there is potency. You can learn there are also how to empower yourself to open up these chakras by yourself. You don't need someone else's help. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can be your own spiritual guardian, uh, guard and teacher. And a teacher may be that wrong word, but like supporter. So you can, you know, learn from other masters or just other dimensions <laughs> or in a spiritual growth, what to uh, what to do step, uh, step by step, what's the safest to do. So yes, I think they are shapes. Like we we were talking just about it, about the shapes and um and the creation of the whole food. So compose it with the other aspects because that won't be just the fruit, just the color, senses, all the environmental natural perception that we can use utilize on that level then yes i agree that you can open up the chakras and working on yourself and meditations and can be i hope that helps <laughs> yeah of course i'm sure and i loved it and the next question claire said how does magdalena handle cooked food cravings this um she said a juice fast is not a current option for me at the moment i don't have any cravings but did you Oh, yeah. She said, how did you handle them? Did you ever have uh, How did I then? Yeah, sorry. Holy moly. See, I had a craving. I maybe how, how, what I would do, what I would do if I would have cravings, I would eat more fruits. I would eat more salads mm-hmm. to some dry fruit, some dry, uh, some dry fruits, something that fills me satisfied. So I don't think about cooked food. There is nothing wrong with the cooked soup. Hot tea. If you need to have warmer juice, same thing. Just uh, boil it, but to the certain degree, so it's not too hot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not like killing all the enzymes, uh, good stuff in the food. So the less cooked, the better. But there is nothing wrong. So if you need to follow this path for a certain period of time, just please do this. Don't torture yourself. I, I think that's the most important thing to achieve your goal, to what you want to achieve. And um, I I would I would follow still cooked food to the moment of, I would do the transition protocol. And I would be more than happy to help with that. From three months, two weeks, two weeks, uh, one of my clients yesterday, yesterday, no, I want two weeks only. Like, I don't need more. I'm like, okay, let's do this. We'll see if you can handle that. But mm-hmm. sometimes it's a month, sometimes three months, six months. And then the transition protocol will help you to not to crave that cooked food later. Mm-hmm. Because if you jump too fast, too quickly to something, then you can have that cravings. And I think that's a common experience that many people can can get. Mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. like with uh, let's say someone is coming to me and want to transition from heavy diet into healthy diet that we know it's a frugivore diet for us so uh, if they want that uh, okay awesome i'm so happy to help but i would never put that person okay from tomorrow you eat raw or mm-hmm. i'm gonna put you in juices mm-hmm why that person would quit that person would be like well no are you kidding me are you crazy i'm like Mm -hmm. i'm not even coming to you coming back to you i always give a space i learn are you ready for this how ready you are that long we do it and if you fail in this protocol you never fail there is no failure you can always come back but you are on the right track already you're here you're listening to uh, jillian has a beautiful youtube channel already so you're on the right in the right spot with the right people uh, to help you with that. So I would do, do transition protocol and the, the more uh, intuitively you, you will do it and the more intentions you're going to put it towards that protocol, the, the easier it's going to be for you in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that will can help you with cravings big time. Yeah. Yeah. And the next question, they said, are you familiar with Elitom Element? I think he's a breatharian, oh, yeah. E-L-I-T-O-M. 
E L A M I N. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Not really, but if no? it, if that person is Breatherian, I'm I've never been like interested in that much in yeah. this field. Uh, however, I I have a big time here. That's for sure. I've never shared that before. Actually, I feel like it's a right time to share. I experienced. Uh, I tried being a Breatherian when I was younger. I, I just got to the level where I felt like that's a time to feel that way. I mean, I didn't know the name of it. Not mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. I didn't know. Now when I look back, I'm like, what I was doing? I was li literally reading my diary and I was just like, that's what I was doing. Like, I remember now <laughs> when I got, got back yeah. to this pages, I'm like, this is insane. And I just didn't call it that way. I was just ready. Like I, you didn't, you felt completed. Mm -hmm. I think not. So you asked me about Breatharianism or uh, in general. Well, they what, were asking if you knew that individual and then they were uh, saying, what are your thoughts on Breatharianism? Yeah. Oh, just what were my thoughts? I think not needing food or water and only living off the four basic elements in air, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide and the body's abilities to utilize these uh these these elements to create a new one i think that's the high level of consciousness you know so how long level. do people act like so when they do that they how how often do they consume food i see i've been consuming then uh, fruits most of the time and then um mm -hmm. i got to the point where even on my grape juice fast, that was also the time when I felt like I don't need food anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was just like talking to my spiritual guidance and I was just like telling, asking them, hey, is that time for me to do it or not? And uh, what's why I feel that way? Do I really have abilities to do that? I think with my in intense lifetime, lifestyle that I have and so many businesses and projects it's i think it's too much uh, that would be for my soul for now me too i don't know yeah. enough about it though i'm gonna have to look into it more and maybe have somebody on for that because i don't know enough about it but yeah I, I i need to tell you that when i was doing this back then for a little bit i i uh, i think i wasn't there at that level that's why i gave up you know i just didn't know anything about like i knew that it's familiar it felt good mm -hmm. and that's why i had the most i think i would have body experiences too and but it was so i think the environment wouldn't let me to do that i would get crazy <laughs> with all this tension and mm -hmm. be and living in, on this planet the way i would like to live I think the jungle, the environment is the crucial part, like living of grid and things like that. That would be, yeah. But, mm -hmm. you know, however, I think it that was in right time. We'll try it in the future, maybe, if I feel like there is a call for me. I love my fruits, but maybe I will get there at some point too. Um, but never say never, right? So you can be a breatharian and eat intuitively. No. So I think that's the different thing that mm -hmm. I wouldn't call these people breatharians then because mm -hmm. I don't believe in that. If you're a breatharian, you consume air. That's yeah. is about that's high. Wow. And that's yeah. just another level. Yeah. Well, the next question they not the same way of thinking, guys. Not yeah. the same. Way. Yeah. Yeah. The next question they said, how do you make your kidneys filter and why is it important? That's a really good question. Is it, it, it is crucial to have kidneys filtering if we know everything about health, if you want to learn about health. Kidneys are really important to eliminate all the toxins from the body. Uh, so the skin is the biggest eliminative organ mm -hmm. and it's working as our third kidney. And, and, and we have two kidneys and on top of the kidneys, there are adrenals that are sitting on top of the kidneys and they're like, you know, they're like little computers telling kidneys what to do. So all these aspects important to move 
the uh, kidney filtration because we have like uh, Dr. Morse was the one who introduced the lymphatic system connection, the kidney connection mm -hmm. that our body needs to remove uh, certain acids, certain, all the acids through the lymph, so from the lymph through the kidneys. So it is important if you want to thrive, that would be very recommended to do like focus mm -hmm. on the kidney filtration, how to do it. There are many protocols for that, depending on what stage of life you are on, what, what you consume on a daily basis, what you went through. Sometimes it's a spiritual aspect that I was doing also. like uh, That was more like emotional aspect to, for me to make my kidneys filtering rather than my body. So that's emotional aspect is the most important, the, the hardest one. Body mm -hmm. is easy the mm -hmm. emotions are whoa it's it's just the all the sadness that you may experience or the feeling guilty where you shouldn't feel guilty about anything that you've done to your body or whatever mm -hmm. um, or towards others uh, yeah. it just happens yeah nothing because we are too sensitive sometimes about the certain things and see work differently than other people would mm -hmm. think so I think all these aspects are important to be in touch with nature. So a lot of people are not following nature at all. They they don't talk to the nature. They don't talk to uh, animals. Like I think all these beauties, the, all the beauty we have, we have a beautiful, the highest experience we can get in this universe as a human on this mm -hmm. planet, you know? So I think that's the beauty that you can, if you feel connected, you can be like, I can feel like I am a butterfly right now like flying here around these beautiful palm trees and then and then I can feel like a dog I can feel that so mm -hmm. if you feel that connection or if you don't then you think oh she's crazy then maybe it's good to find that connection mm -hmm. and dive into, into that and and spend time in nature spend mm -hmm. time in nature yeah we work on that on the on the on the um, protocols that I love putting people on a pro emotional protocol. I love that because it's a crucial part. That was for me a crucial thing. So I think for a lot of people. Right. There was a lady that came to me. She was working with other specialists and they did everything they could to make her kidneys filtering. Didn't work. She came to me and I just did the emotional protocol with her. Full emotional protocol, support, uh, love, uh, understanding, and she started to feel there very quick after maybe like a two within two weeks or so. Wow. Uh, yes, it's so it's sometimes it takes years for some people to make kidneys filter, and sometimes the cloudiness in the pee. I've been told when I was young, I remember I was like ashamed to give my pee away <laughs> at the cabin, <laughs> cabin because they were like. Well, your pee it looks yuck. I'm like, yeah, but that's the pee that, the way it should look. You know what I mean? And yeah. I was taught differently. I also was taught that, that it should be clean. And every time I was giving it, you know, to the hygiene, like at the school, they were checking pee. And yeah. I was just praying, please be clear. Please be clear. Every time I went to the bathroom and it always came up cloudy. So, oh, you have an infection. You have urine infection. You know, you have a... You need to work on that where clearly uh, what we see as a detox specialist, we see uh, that it's uh, that the kidneys uh, rem are removing acids from the body. All the inflammation, all the stuff that are bad. So mm -hmm. we would call it that way. And we know uh, that that would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the next question, Angie says, how do we get enough to eat raw vegan while exercising? I know what? that's, a, I guess they're wondering how can they have enough, like how can they eat enough? enough? Calories. Yeah. yeah. I think it's important to have three days in a day. I'm, I'm talking here about a person that it's not following herbal protocols and things like that, that I've been following before being on the raw vegan and I was exercising. I just was eating 
I ate till I'm satisfied. I did, if I craved avocados, I had more mm-hmm. avocados that day. If I felt like I need three avocados a day, I I would follow that. Uh, you're building up muscles, structures. A good uh, uh, thing here for building muscles would be amazing. Uh, uh, alfalfa, alfalfa uh, uh, sprouts are amazing. Uh, all the sprouts are beautiful, but alfalfa has that power and strength. Leafy greens, all the leafy greens and things like that, you know, some mm-hmm. nothing to balance it out, but honestly, not much, just a little bit. And so that's how I would follow juicing. Not necessarily if you juice, I would let the body rest. I would never juice and exercise. That's a big no no. It's already the you're creating so much uh, push, uh, like you push the body uh, on a different level, that you're jumping a different level of uh, detoxing through juices so if you are doing that then focus on one would you like to heal or would you like to starve yourself you know (laughs) because it's like pushing extreme energy towards something that it shouldn't be used uh used at that moment you should just let the body rest more Mm -hmm. on the juice even Mm -hmm. go to bed sleep so if you're really want to rebuild and restructure your muscles uh, structure and function then i would really advise to detox first and then rebuild the body but if you don't are not interested in detox then raw vegan is a i think it's a big deal here that would be beautiful yeah yeah without beans without the protein heavy protein yeah okay and the next question, they said, how has this affected your menstrual cycle and PMS symptoms? I think we talked a little bit about that, but if there's anything else you want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I, I mentioned that I think before too, that I, I I had that experience that not having menstruation at all. I did my menstruation when I was 15, about that age. And then I, I just lost it from, and they even told me, and the doctors were telling me, oh, you lost it because you travel so much. Stop traveling, you're going to get your peer back. I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> 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 um, so, so yeah, so I tried everything to help heal, heal myself to get that peer back. And I need to tell you, mm-hmm. once I got my body, I got less. And I was uh, in such a pain, bad pain when I had my periods in the past. Once I started eating even on, on the raw food i had the pain eating raw vegan food i w- i just had such a bad chronic congestion there so wow. i yeah i went on fruits the pain was gone and completely wow. after, completely gone after i after detox on herbs yeah reproductive system uh, pituitary all the connections between the uh, the hormones balanced and i don't really have pain i don't really have pain uh, in the reproductive system I, I have my period right now, by the way. So mm-hmm. if you have now one, we can connect. <laughs> yeah, mine's coming tomorrow morning. So, oh, look yeah. at that. Yeah. I just yeah. got it like this literally today. And I'm like, what? Today again? Like, no, just kidding. The, the time flies by quickly. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's more intense if I am more tired, like tired because I work so much. But when I work less, that period is just like I. I just the period is nothing but spotting. It's mm-hmm. just like really there, and it the the blood is very pinky. It's a really beautiful color too. So, but the more I I put um, different stuff in my body, let's say mm-hmm. I don't. I forget to clean. Maybe not forget. Be from being lazy, grab a fruit without cleaning it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You put some chemicals into the body or something you get stressed yeah situations uh stress be uh, like when i got like in that car accident same thing trauma i've been i've been in the situation where i was just like oh my gosh i feel like i'm gonna be like in a car accident from now on i'm just scared i was scared at the beginning you know that wasn't Mm -hmm. me that trauma that i needed to go through to heal it it passed by like i don't have i don't feel it anymore but it was there for a little period of time Mm -hmm. and i believe that would be longer so all these acids are there and then you can experience more 
more more uh, pay. excuse me could you repeat the question because i wanna the about the pms oh the pms yeah um, so um it was a how it affected your menstrual cycle and yes. the pms symptoms yeah so all yeah. these traumas are there to stored and then you can experience pain and then mm -hmm. more intense the period is becoming when you are in this acid and the acidic stage you know mm -hmm. so last month uh that was two months ago i had very little spotting this month i experienced a little more just like regular bleeding like and darker darker blood uh, why and i know why well because i know what's and i knew that's gonna happen because i was working so hard i didn't sleep enough i went to bed way too late mm -hmm. um, and put to go without cleaning it sometimes too it happened to me too mm -hmm. so a lot of other aspects too that are around me so you know it's just life yeah <laughs> so, but and no pain i i could still make the interview here and i could make and bless Good. that i'm here today so thank you for having me Me too <laughs> i'm blessed that you're here too and okay so a couple more this next question douglas said i just started slowly eating fruit i am mm -hmm. vegetarian want to know why fruit gives a person gas and heartburn mm. must mm -hmm. be because their digestion's a little bit backed up right from things they ate before that and beautiful answer yes i think also without cleaning gi tract and also there's so much sulfur in the body usually when i see clients coming and i see the iris and i do aridology almost everyone has super high intense sulfur in the body wow the eyes are just like like fl fl fluorescent <laughs> you know you can see that uh, the, the toxins are all over the body I had so much sulfur, guys, releasing sulfur. And that's why I experienced pain at the beginning was of raw food because I had so, so much sulfur in my body and wow. I was eating sulfur. Yeah. Uh, like uh, uh, the vegetables that are like broccoli, cauliflowers. Yeah. yeah. Cauliflower, some mushrooms. Like what's the call of these mush uh, the mushrooms that are the most popular. I forgot because I don't eat the them. mushrooms. No. The, uh, I don't know. The one that are like, we have them in Poland, in Europe a lot, like the white one with that brown button. I forget Kitchen. too. I think I it starts with the C. Yeah, I forget. I'm not a big mushroom person, but yeah. Yeah. See, <laughs> we know nothing about mushroom. Yeah. But when I consumed, I, 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 ha I had them. And um, and yeah, and yeah, that that's how I felt uh, about it. And and. And I experienced pain. I experienced pain. I went through the pain. Even I ate. Um, then I stopped eating mushrooms. Then I stopped eating other food that, and trying to find out what's going on. I hurt even after eating leafy greens. You know, I believe when you eat bad food before, you are you might be so acidic in the body that you may want to follow with a transition protocol that will help you to adjust and up. Mm -hmm. And the clean food, the alkaline food, when you put on top of that acid, it can burn, it can hurt. You know, when you put like uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide, when you have like open wound, it hurts sometimes, right? You can mm -hmm. hear alcohol, anything, mm -hmm. anything you put, there is a reaction. You can feel mm -hmm. that it can, it can hurt. So same thing, it, happening, it happens when you put in a body, imagine the same thing. I, I don't know, like, the alcohol that's another thing uh, mm -hmm. that's another subject completely but alcohol if it burns you, our skin it's drying our skin in, we put it in a stomach mm -hmm. whoa that's just like letting other entities come into your spirit literally that's a that's why it's called a spiritus yeah so a spirit mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. spirit for us mm -hmm. spiritus <laughs> yeah no i know yeah how crazy it is it's so, crazy yeah yeah but it, all these reactions can create a lot of chemical reactions for us that are not necessarily good mm -hmm. and toxins that are stored in the body mm -hmm. so and one thing here about sulfur it's such a burning experience when you release sulfur it's not fun at all but i was so happy to release i released tons of sulfur it was hours on the toilet running running stools 
you couldn't sometimes get up from the toilet because it was so bad. Yellow stuff coming out intensely. Yeah. And sometimes I was just like, when you get it in the middle, uh, like you get the store, you need to run to the bathroom, but you don't want to do it in a yeah, no, to totally. To yeah. <laughs> so you keep holding and you're like, oh my gosh, I still need to get home, you know? Yeah. And it's like the worst. Yes, you. I went through that too. And, and guess what? And I, I felt better than ever. And my eyes changed colors because they were super orangish black. And now they're not anymore. They're more like brown, brown. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's just crazy how uh, sulfur is bad to the human body. So especially if you have a lot of sulfur, I wouldn't recommend durian because durian has natural Mm -hmm. stuff in it that can irritate if you have a lot of sulfur. Same, Same with the hot springs. Hot springs. People are attending to hot springs. Just be careful if it has a sulfur, like sulfuric, uh, things there you can experience uh, side effects epsom salt i i don't recommend epsom salt for baths a lot of people are using it so there are so many components that are people don't know and even some vegetables same thing so it's good to avoid certain things too on transition yeah, for- yeah makes sense makes sense okay yeah. and the next question becky said how can i get my weight back i eat a standard american diet and i eat a lot i can eat anything and my weight doesn't go up how can I eat fruit only to do it safely? I would like to gain my weight back badly. Please help. By the way, you look great, Magdalena. Oh, oh thank you so much. I'm blushing. <laughs> How to get your weight back? That's that's something that uh, everyone is curious about. Uh, when you, I don't know if that person is on detox journey or what journey that person is. First thing, if it's not on the detox, there could be malabsorption issue, mucus plaque, mm-hmm. and problem with utilization stuff because of mm-hmm. uh, because of thickness of the mucus plaque that it's their rubbery consistency. You can uh, uh, type in Google mucus plaque how bad it looks, how bad it can be. People are like, yeah, I know. It it's crazy. Toilet. Yeah, yeah. So this, how, how else can you gain weight if you don't absorb stuff? Mm-hmm. That's a good you point. Don't utilize- yeah, so it's as this, you know, it's so simple to understand, okay. I, right? And it's just like I think it's that simple that it's too simple for some people that they have to make it more complicated to understand for us, and they don't believe in it. Well, no, are you kidding me? Like that's all? Yeah, that's just fix the. Uh, the I would fix GI tract, and 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 I would um put myself on the herbs and on on herbs and emotional protocol and support. Have a mm-hmm. good specialist to work with, and that's what I would do, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, um, and focus on that, then, then you can expect that this weight to, to rebuild the body, because we need to hydrate first, regen- re- rebuild, regenerate it. And then we need to rebuild, uh, rebuild it kind of mm-hmm. like the muscles, right? So, mm-hmm. and detox before that, that that's yeah. the most important. So, yeah. And then if you are going through detox, like I like I mentioned before, I was waiting patiently and I was just accepting the way I look. And I was like, oh, I can be like myself. I feel light. Mm-hmm. You know, it's of course important the way you feel. Yeah. I felt I felt light and, and and that felt me really good. I didn't care if someone would say something or whatever. Like I don't judge people. I don't tell a fat person you look fat. Mm-hmm. The same thing they can't tell people to to you look the way you look because that's the way you look maybe you think why i think uh, someone can look that way right because maybe it's going through a lot of things in their lives and yeah exactly yeah, yeah. I so know. i think you 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 can gain the way back after being very focused on the goal and the body will find the balance that balance it out and put the weight that your body requires to mm-hmm. be on mm-hmm. okay amazing and I want to ask this is mm-hmm. totally a different question altogether yeah. but is that your natural hair color it is right you don't color your hair no I don't I used to color my hair <laughs> me too your hair color is so beautiful thank, thank you I think you know what I noticed when I uh, when I am in a colder climate where the sun is not as intense 
my color is dark it's blonde. darker yeah way darker it's dark blonde mm -hmm. when i'm here and being in the ocean sun is super strong florida has sun sun is super strong yeah. it's just like and i think you know i believe also that a lot of stuff are uh, leaving our body through the hair as well mm -hmm. so who knows what the real colors will be you know True. ask yourself what color you had when you were born wow yeah I know many people they had super dark hair and they are blonde all of a sudden like later and they never done anything to their to their hair wow. or they they uh there are some things that they do naturally also like chamomile and things like that which just can be helpful to also pull stuff out yeah you know like herbs and things if you use you know I think I think you can like uh, uh Dr. Morris was playing with some herbs and his hair got white and, oh. and was, yeah he was playing with some certain specific uh, root uh, herb and some things can happen so just just be aware that you know um <laughs> you can <laughs> you, he he can speak about himself a lot here I think you know I want to have him on I think he's amazing he he's his beautiful mm -hmm. so uh yeah yeah so that's some things like i believe there was a someone that was born with blonde hair and a super dark hair right now and it's getting brighter hair like one of my clients so i'm just saying it's it all depends what the way you were born but sometimes mm -hmm. the way you were born you can already be congested chronically that maybe yeah. it's not even your natural color yet so true yeah good point yeah it really depends. I, I, I don't, I don't know. We'll see where the journey is going. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's a fun experience, and yeah, and, and it's great. I mean, it's great. We have YouTube now, and we can follow everyone's journey, like long term, and see like what where everyone goes, and you know what I mean, all the different journeys. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's yeah. true. And yeah, I I may come back to that too. <laughs> yeah, if it feels That's right, me. you know yeah yeah that's that that takes a lot of patience and and a game and engagement like other all other work right so yeah i i well, yeah. if the door I opens then... that you're so determined and i love it yeah well i love you and it's been so amazing okay. having you on so i would love to just if there's anything you feel called to say to end off like anything at all i mean if somebody's struggling out there looking for some advice or just anything at all that comes to mind and if you could let everybody know where they can find you and i'll link everything below including your course and everybody go follow magdalena on instagram and everywhere and check out the course as well she's incredible i'm speechless <laughs> <laughs> Thank <you> so <laughs> of You're course so, so kind my I think it's so easy. A rock coconut girl. If you put on Google, you're gonna find everything. So there is will be my website www.rockcoconutgirl.com. My email address for for contact for the for all the people that want to heal or get to the well will. Uh, it's uh, rock coconut girl at gmail.com. My Instagram rock coconut girl. My YouTube rock coconut girl. So <laughs> and my uh, product in Maui rock coconut girl. <laughs> by Michael and White. <laughs> so we're really inviting uh, you to 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 check it out and there are more things coming too so I'm so excited I'm just giving like you know slowly slowly things to so not to uh to rush or or see there are some things ready or already that i was working on but I, I feel it's not right time to share it yet so i'm waiting sometimes with things and i'm like no this needs more time this that's gonna be a different way that that's not the frequency yet that's not so i kind of feel like this is a right moment okay i'm doing it right right now you know mm -hmm. just following the intuition so yeah i i will be more than happy to share all of that with way more with everyone yeah absolutely amazing thank you thank you so much and i i don't know if i have anything else to say i think i have a, such a pleasure talking to you and and you're you're just very beautiful soul and you know and i'm very happy and grateful that we could meet and and Me have too. some 
chopped. <laughs> Me too. And I love you. And you, you're so amazing the way you answered all the questions. I always love talking to you. And in the future, I'd love to have you on again one day as well. Oh, mm. You're amazing. I will, be, I will be more than happy and to help as much as I can and answer more questions. I'm excited. Yeah. I love answering yeah. questions. The questions were great. Fun. And yeah. I just want to say to the viewers, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it added some value to your day or to your evening. And if it did, give it a big thumbs up right now. And make sure you subscribe if you don't already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.